Hi everyone, it's David here from Sysadmin Tutorials and today we're going to be bringing you this vCloud Director demonstration on creating a new organization as well as a virtual data center within the organization. If you've come across this video without seeing my previous tutorials, you can simply go to my webpage at www.sysadmintutorials.com forward slash tutorials forward slash VMware hyphen vCloud hyphen director and you'll see quite a few VMware vCloud director tutorials which will lead you up to where we are today. So these tutorials are a complete step-by-step -step, easy to follow how-to on installing and setting up vCloud director. Now if we jump back into our vCloud director user interface I'm logged in here as the administrator and we're going to be creating a new organization called Company B. So I'm going to click on here, create another organization. We're going to give the organization a name. We'll type in the full organizational name and a short description. Now we have three options for authentication to our organization. We can either use the local vCloud Director user base. We can use an Active Directory domain controller from our vCloud Director backend. Or if the company has their own Active Directory domain controllers, we can use the custom LDAP service. Today we're going to select do not use LDAP. So we'll be adding local users from the vCloud Directory database. And that brings us up to this step. So we'll click on add. We'll type in admin and we'll give our admin a password and we'll confirm the password. We'll type in admin for the full name. We'll drop down the roles here and select organization administrator. For full name, we'll type in admin and under quotas, we're gonna leave both these options as unlimited. For the catalog section, I'm not gonna be selecting any options here as we'll be using a catalog from our main organization that we created in an earlier tutorial. So I'm gonna click on next. Now for email alerts and notifications, we can point this to a specific SMTP server or we can use the system default from our vCloud setup. We can also specify a sender's email address and an email subject prefix. So we'll select set organization notification settings. Our sender email address will be vcloud at companyb.local and our email subject prefix will be square bracket vcloud director close square bracket and we'll be sending system notifications to all organization administrators. We can also test an email destination by entering an email address in this field here and clicking test email settings. Now let's click next. For this organization, we're gonna give them a lease time of seven days. So we'll be setting all these to seven days and once the seven days has expired, we'll be permanently deleting all the objects. Okay, if we scroll down, this organization they've purchased five virtual machines and we're only going to allow them to run five virtual machines in total for the limits we're only going to allow one intensive operation per user one intensive operation per organization and we'll allow two simultaneous connections per VM optionally we can set a password policy on this last option here however we won't set that on this one so we'll click next and we'll see a summary here of all our settings and we'll click finish to complete. Now if we click on manage and monitor, we can see here we've got our company B organization and this brings us up to creating a VDC for our company B. So I'm going to right click on company B and select allocate resources. I'll be using the resources from our VM lad provider VDC and the status bars to the right here show us how much processor, memory and storage is available. Down here we have an external network that will be available to our edge gateway when we come up to that step. So we'll click next. This company has been sold an allocation pool. So we'll select that option and click next. The settings for the allocation pool, each vCPU will be allocated 2 gigahertz. We're going to guarantee 5% of the CPU resources. They've purchased 6 gig of memory and again we're going to guarantee 5% of that and the maximum number of VMs is going to be five. So we'll move on now to storage. Here we have our storage policies, bronze, gold, platinum and silver. These guys have bought 100 gig of gold storage. So I'm going to select gold, click on add. And to the right hand side here under storage limit, we're going to type in 100. We're going to leave our default policy here as gold storage. If you add multiple storage policies to the VDC, we can drop this down and select other storage tiers. However, because this company's only bought 100 gig of gold storage policy, we only have that option. Next, we'll tick the box for enabling thin provisioning. 
and we'll also make sure that enable fast provisioning is ticked here as well. So ticking enable fast provisioning will make use of vSphere linked clones. Now let's move on. Let's set up a network pool now. So we're going to use a pool from the VXLAN network. We'll allow this company to create five networks. We're going to be creating a new edge gateway, so we'll tick this box here. We'll be calling it company BGW for gateway. We're just going to select the compact option. We won't select the enable high availability at this stage. And the advanced options we'll leave unticked for now as well. To configure an external network, we'll click on that external net 1 that we saw previously. And we'll click add. Click on default gateway. And also click on use default gateway for DNS relay. So this is going to allow us to point our servers to the edge gateway for DNS as we don't have any other DNS servers in the network at this stage. So we'll click next. Now we'll be creating an internal network. So I'll click on create a network for this virtual data center connected to this new edge gateway. And we're going to name this network company B internal. I'll leave this unticked for now, share this network with other VDCs in this organization as this will be the only VDC in the company B organization. It automatically has access to the external network, external net one, and our internal IP address scheme and gateway address will be 192.168.20.1 for the default gateway, and the net mask 255.255.255.0. So as you can see here, we're using a gateway DNS, 192.168.20.1, which is this edge gateway. And now we'll set up a static IP pool of 192.168.20.10-192.168.20.14. So this will give us five IP addresses to use from the pool. As we provision a new server, the new server will utilize one IP address from this pool. And the same thing will happen when we provision more servers. So I'll click add there and next. I'll give this VDC a name, company B VDC. And optionally, you can give it a description. We'll leave this tick enabled and we'll move on. This window will show us a summary of all our settings that we've previously selected here. So I'm going to click finish and the VDC will be created along with the edge gateway. If I click on organization VDCs, we can see that our company B VDC is being created at this stage. The allocation model is allocation pool, belongs to company B organization. It's within the provider VDC called VMLab PVDC, contains one resource pool and is connected to vCloud 6 vCenter. Okay, if we click on organization VDCs here on the left, we can see that our company B VDC has been created and we have the green tick on the status column here. So now we're going to click on our VDC and we'll go to our edge gateways and we can see our edge gateway here, company BGW. So we'll right click on that and we're going to go to edge gateway services and you can see we have a number of services up here, DHCP, NAT, firewall, static routing, VPN and load balancer. So we're going to click on firewall and we're going to add a firewall rule. The name will be allow ICMP. Source will be 192.168.20.0 slash 24. Source port will be any. Destination will be any. And destination port will also be any. Protocol, we're going to be selecting ICMP. Action allow. And at this stage we won't log the network traffic for this rule. We'll click OK and we'll click OK again. So this will configure the edge gateway with that firewall rule and that's now been completed. So we'll click on My Cloud up the top here and let's deploy a vApp. So we'll click on the green plus symbol here and let's select a catalog from the public catalogs and we'll click on All Templates. We'll click on CentOS 65 underscore x64. We'll click on next. We'll give our VIP a name, Linux Web Servers. Our virtual data center will be company B VDC. And you can see our lease rules down here for that seven days we set previously. 
Now the virtual machine name will be centos-web1 and you can see that it's going to be in the gold storage policy as that's the only storage tier that's been allocated. The computer name will also call centos-web1 and we'll connect it to the company B internal network. It will be a static IP address obtained from the IP pool. So this virtual machine will have one vCPU, it'll have one gig of RAM and 16 gig hard drive on disk zero. Again, here's a summary of the settings and we'll click finish to create the vApp and virtual machine. Okay, the vApp and the virtual machine has been created. If we jump over to the vSphere client, we can see here that the company B VDC resource pool has been created. If I edit this resource pool, we can also see the reservations and limits on CPU and memory that we've set previously. Here is our CentOS Web 1 server. We're going to power this vApp on now. So I'll right click on it and click start. Now the CentOS server has started. If I click on Linux web servers on the vApp here, it gives us a nice little diagram of how the CentOS Web 1 server is connected. Simply it is connected via the company B internal network. If I go back into my vSphere client, we can see that the server has started. We can use the VMRC console via vCloud Director. You can also use the console through vSphere client here. Now our CentOS systems booted up. So if we log in with root and the password, we'll check out the network configuration. You can see on ETH1 we've been allocated 192.168.20.10, which is an IP address from the static IP pool. If we try to ping the default gateway to test our ICMP rule, we can see we get replies from our default gateway, which is actually uh, NSX Edge. So that completes this short tutorial on creating organizations and virtual data centers. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.